Hi everyone, I am here with Imam Muhammad Tawhidi. How are you doing, Imam? Good, thank you very much. Pleasure. And we're here in Washington, D.C. Uh, I should probably start by asking, what brings you to Washington, D.C.? Well, firstly, thank you very much for uh, having me. Uh, secondly, I come to Washington, D.C. quite a lot. I do a lot of uh, advisory mm -hmm. work with uh, certain uh, figures in this region, as well as Canada. Um, and, uh, you know, I reached out to you, wanting to sit down. And I have my reasons as to why I picked you. Uh, but yeah, let's get the introduction going first. Well, no, we, 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 can't, we can't move <laughs> past that. Um, some people who don't know you are probably wondering why you're not like chopping my head off or something. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've been interviewed by many people. Uh, so far, I've given over 400 interviews. And there's always this 1% uh, in people's minds that, how do we know he's not lying? Mm -hmm. How do we know he doesn't have a different agenda? So I said to myself, who is the one person I can sit with that would definitely know if I'm lying? That would definitely know if I have a point, if he can see where I'm coming from, and if he can understand and relate to what I'm saying. So who's that one person? And also has to have a good audience, uh -huh. uh, speaks English, so I can speak in English, knows the books I might reference, Brother David. <laughs> so I reached out to you and said, you know, I'd welcome an opportunity to record a video with you uh -huh. so that our both our audiences, we share a lot of mutual uh -huh. audiences, can uh, see this side of the story as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that, that, that's important to note that we share a lot of the same audiences. Like, um, I've mainly followed you on Twitter. Right. Um, and I noticed you've, for years, been condemning a lot of the same things I condemn. Uh, you talk about a lot of the same issues uh, that I talk about. Okay. Uh, there will be a verse which you can put for your viewers. Uh, could you do that? Yep. A verse that I will give you. And I will mention it now. It is a verse that says that nobody shall touch the Quran except for those who are pure, except the purified ones. And this verse, which is on the screen now, or would be on the screen now, is a verse that has very deep meaning in the sense that everybody can touch the Quran. But why does the Quran say nobody will touch it? except those who are purified. And it means nobody will really touch that true meaning of what the Qur'an means, and nobody will reach the actual meaning of what the Qur'an is trying to uh, convey and get across, except those who are purified. In the vision of Islam, those who are purified is the Prophet and those around him. So this solves the whole problem of Islamic interpretation. Nobody has the right to interpret the Qur'an unless you are the Prophet or his family. No, only the household of revelation. If you're a Muslim and you believe that the Quran was revealed unto Muhammad in the house, then only those who are part of that house have the right to interpret. Only those. And I will tell you why. But l let me be a, a bit more open with you here. Everybody can interpret the Quran. Anyone who knows Arabic can interpret the Quran. Anyone with, a, with the, some degree in Islam can say, yes, this means that. But... Do they have the right to say this is the only interpretation? There are tens of thousands of books of tafsir interpreting the Quran, and which you know probably hundreds of them. Tens of thousands of them exist in different languages. Now, all of them are right? No. Why? Because they're humans. I cannot say this book, I believe, is from God. And I will interpret it with the mind of the human being. It doesn't work like that. A human can never interpret the, the word of God and say, this is exactly what God meant. How? How do you know? How do you know? You can say, this is what I think could be what God means. That's a different story. If you believe, if you as a Muslim believe that this is what could be God's law, then you shouldn't be killing people based on what you believe could be, uh, could not be God's law. The only figures that have the right to interpret the Quran and say this should be followed 100% is the Prophet and those around him. Everybody else don't have that credibility. So that's why I say, you bring me a million interpretations of the Quran. 
If it's not from the Prophet and those around him, it doesn't carry that weight. Just some scholar wrote the book. So what? So what? And like I said before, Islam today put the Quran aside. Most Muslims don't even read the Quran. They don't even understand the Quran. You know, Somalia, India, Pakistan, they don't know what the Quran is saying. Some of them do. Majority don't. Even if they memorize it, they're memorizing the words. They don't know what it's saying. They don't know the real meaning. These people, they want to rule uh, the religion. They don't even know what they're talking about. They don't. So uh, we are in a serious mess. And because of that, it has become a religion of men, dominated by men, hierarchies, take finances from people. It doesn't need change. It doesn't need change. It needs help. And there is some change going on. But at the end of the day, it's not enough. And more people are dying in the process. So what can what, what's the solution? The solution is we need you to help us solve this problem. Because number one, we don't have the platform. We don't have the sources. We don't have the protection. So if change was to begin, it would begin in the West or in countries protected by the West. Many of you may have seen a recent interview where two figures claiming to be Muslim leaders have made outrageous and sensational claims. Firstly, Muhammad Tawhidi. He has alleged that Muslims have a secret agenda to create their own Islamic country inside Australia. Now this claim is not only outrageous, but completely baseless as no evidence or proof was provided by Tawhidi. In fact, very little is actually known about this man and who exactly his followers are. After a quick online search, his so-called Islamic Association in South Australia seems to have only been set up last year and the local community doesn't seem to be aware of its existence. His so-called Imams for Peace board that claims to be a community of faith leaders from around the world seems to have no other members but himself. One Path Network set out to find out who this man actually is and after contacting the Australian National Imams Council, the peak body of Muslim Imams in Australia, they revealed that this man is clearly not a recognised Imam, Sheikh or a Muslim leader. We also contacted the leader of the Imams Council of South Australia, Sheikh Amin Abu Samaha, who heads the largest mosque in the state for a comment. He too clearly stated that Tawhidi is not a member of the Islamic leadership in South Australia and is in no way recognised. Then there's Tawhidi. Oh, Tawhidi. Tawhidi, you be you've been a naughty boy, Tawhidi. You see, brother Tawhidi was basically a student right here in the holy city of Qum. I've been talking to your friends, your former friends. Why are you pretending like you know anything at all? According to Wikipedia, he's 34 years old and was made an imam by he who must not be named in Qum, Iran in 2010. In an interview, Tawhidi said he received his bachelor's degree and master's degree in Islamic theology from Al Mustafa International in Qum. But that's just not true, is it? Because according to Mustafa International, a BA in Islamic studies takes at least five to six years, but you weren't here that long. Let's see what Mustafa International itself has to say about you. The aforementioned person, i.e. Tawhidi, took part in the preparatory Islamic education course, the preliminary program, and the Persian language learning course from 2009 to 2011 and received the degree of these courses. I know exactly what that is, as do my other fellow Hausa students. It's just the preliminary course where they teach you Farsi and give you an overview of what you will be studying later on in Hausa studies. You didn't even start your bachelor's, but you're going around saying that you've done your master's. The letter goes on to state, notwithstanding the fact that he was present for more than one year in the seminary, no educational progress had been achieved, and it was thus that he was placed on probation and dropped out in 2012. Hence, the aforementioned person has no educational degree or any given score in his profile, and Al Mustafa University does not recommend Muhammad Tawhidi for lecturing in any way. You present yourself as someone who has the authority to talk about things that you have no knowledge of. And forget that! Tawhidi, who wasn't even a successful Hausa student, is now a Hausa teacher. MashaAllah! Who goes to his classes? Like, who invites this guy to speak? Where did you get that turban from, Tawhidi? You're certainly not qualified to be talking about Islam, much like others in your social circle, but at least the others are at least a little bit versed in Arabic grammar, you know, at least they have a little bit of knowledge. They're the professional mischief makers. Why don't you just leave it to them, shut up and sit down? But Tawhidi, what did you do to get press coverage? 
I mean, you must have done something to be accepted so graciously by the mainstream media. What did you do? See, Tawhidi is presenting himself as a figurehead of apologetic Islam, where he basically tries to say, oh, the, the, the Takfiri Wahhabis, they're the bad guys, which we all know. We know that Takfiri Wahhabis are the bad guys. But then he goes on to say that I'm a peaceful Muslim and the bad guys are using Sunni books. This here is Sahih al-Bukhari. Ditch it and ban it and it should be illegal to have this book. He basically bolsters the stereotype of Sunni Muslims all being takfiris. Tawidi also reckons he knows a terrorist when he sees one. Share the moustache, grow the beard, messy beard, stop using deodorant, normal music, they change their ringtone. When they start wearing completely Arabic dresses, everywhere they go. So what he does is he gives shoulder to all those Islamophobes out there who want to prove that Islam is a misogynistic, barbaric, violent religion. And he comes along and says, hello, I'm an imam. All those things that you Islamophobes have been saying about Islam, they're right. I know, I've studied it. I'm an imam. So then all the Islamophobes come along and say, good boy, Tawhidi, here's more promotion. It's like a Jewish rabbi walking up to Goebbels in Nazi Germany and saying, hey, all those things you've been saying about Jews, they're right. We are pedophiles files and we are stingy and then the Nazi turns around and says good boy Mr. Rabbi here's a promotion the Islamophobes want to prove that Islam was spread by the sword so Tawhidi comes along and says exactly that how did Islam spread from Saudi Arabia down to Indonesia and Bosnia all spread by the sword we had many wars and for the past 1400 years we have had a religion of war and what's worse is that he presents himself as somebody who has studied the texts in detail and therefore has the authority to determine that the texts themselves are the problem. This book is danger. Danger. Nobody should read these books. They, they brainwash. The mainstream media wants hype. It wants people to be scared. It wants them to think that a terrorist is ready to jump out at them from every corner and that Muslims are taking over, etc, etc. Tawhidi comes along and says, you're right and you can trust me because I'm a Muslim. I'm not going to be biased. And we see them attacking the police. So we're being infested by radical clerics here in Australia. Yes, clerics and followers as well. And I've said this to many government authorities and I'd like to show you something. I bought this two days ago from a shop within Melbourne. This is Al-Qaeda's flag. These are stickers that are being sold for a few dollars. They have them on their windscreens. They have them everywhere. What? He presents himself as somebody who has in-depth knowledge and is therefore exposing a Muslim conspiracy. I expose their intentions to create a caliphate within Australia. I am considered a fake because I condemn terrorism. I'm considered a fake because I respect Queen Elizabeth. I'm considered a fake because I reject Sharia law and live by the Australian law. I'm considered a fake because I would die for Australia. I'm considered a fake because I want an Islam that is compatible with the West. You deserve a good spanking, Tawhidi.